Well, congratulations, you guys, on uh, another podium. Familiar faces here at Round 9 at Unadilla. And uh, welcome to the press conference. Obviously, Jet, let's start with you. Uh, amazing season so far, championship. And uh, the first championship from Honda, I think, since 2004 in the Premier class. So what's it feel like to continue with the streak and, and the championship as a rookie? Um, yeah, unreal day. Uh, I, I've always liked coming to this track. I feel like when they rip it like how they do normally, it's a it's an unreal, unreal track. It kind of brings back almost European vibes with the with all the ruts and that stuff. Um, and, and yeah, it's it's pretty cool to see what I've done so far. It's it's cool. Um, coming in, a lot of I obviously mentally it was like, all right, it's, I know I can do those guys' pace, but I, it's whether if I can beat them or not, or, or if I have the knowledge and. After the first few rounds, I kind of just got that, wasn't confidence, but I just started, no, I, I see you get my starts and kind of just think it through more. And it's, it's kind of good. It's all the, a lot of the media guys uh, on the podcast and that stuff. I mean, they're doubting me, saying I'm going to have one of those rookie season uh, uh, where I may crash and that stuff. I mean, the last person I remember getting a, a championship in their rookie season and dominate was, was the guy next to me. So, I mean, I had that as my goal. Uh, it was hard with him in there, and especially Chase. Uh, definitely tough competitors. They have that uh, never die in them. So it was a, a fun season so far, and I'm still still excited for the last two rounds. Okay, well, let's talk about the guys next to you. Uh, Chase put some early pressure on you in the first moto, and you guys actually came together in one corner. And then Dylan came on very, very hard at the end of the first moto. Did you see him coming? And, uh, you know, speak about that a little bit. Yeah, no, um, yeah, the incident with Chase is kind of funny. We, bo we both came back, and I'm like, uh, I originally thought I was going to go on that second rut, and then I seen out of the corner of my eye that other rut, and, and uh, Chase obviously was coming in uh, hard, and that was his main line, I'm pretty sure. And I, I decided to switch it up. I'm like, oh, mate, that line looks better. So I just tried to switch it up, and I didn't know he was there. Those bikes are always so hard to hear. So it wasn't really anyone's fault, I feel like. It was just a bit of a, a sticky situation. Uh, bit of a bummer situation but um th thankfully we both stayed up and then yeah at the end dylan started doing some really good laps and i started getting started racing against lappers um and and dylan was coming close those last few laps were very nervous i could see that blue bike getting closer and closer i'm like oh no i was just thinking in my head i'm like if i lose this because of a lap i'm gonna be so pissed but thankfully i was able to just, just to get it uh get, get it across the finish line so um but yeah very good. And Chase, talk about that first moto. You had a good run there. You were keeping Jet more than honest there right all over him. And, and I know it's not really much of a secret now. You spent quite a bit of time testing between uh, our, during our break, made some changes to your bike, and it seemed to improve it. Uh, so tell us a little bit about both of those things. Yeah, I had a good uh, couple of days of testing in the, in the break. And I feel like first moto, my bike was handling really well I was happy with it obviously didn't get the uh, end result that I wanted ended up crashing but besides for that I felt like I was riding good and um, had a good battle with Jet so um, yeah I feel like we made progress changed quite a bit of stuff on the bike and it's uh, yeah I felt more comfortable today for sure even in qualifying what kind of changes do you make I mean was it chassis suspension what, what all the changes you made um, just suspension stuff uh, front end and, and a little bit of shock stuff but not not re reinventing the wheel, just kind of some minor things that I thought could be better. And it's uh, it's kind of hard late in the season like this. It's um, we kind of <laughs> ride what we have, but there is a, a little opportunity to change stuff. So we took that opportunity, and I feel like we made the best of it. And I think we're in a in a better spot. Okay, thank you, uh, Dylan. Excellent first moto. You came on so strong. Second moto. Your, your start, as Bevo, Bevo says, great start in the second moto, uh, being sarcastic, obviously. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, tell us, you, you rode really, really well and, and, and you hampered by a poor start in the second moto. Tell us about your race. Yeah, uh, that's a good moto. Uh, you know, some race like Washugara was not really feeling great and not really have the speed, and I was getting all shot, and this track where I was feeling great today and uh, trying to get all shot. Uh, yeah, I broke my uh, all shot device or pl plastic fork. Like, I don't know exactly what broke, but like t two feet after the gate. And yeah, obviously the bike wheelie and it was over. So yeah, just uh, lack of luck. And I don't know. Uh, I don't know why it happened today. Uh, it sucked, but yeah, it's what it is. So then I was dead last at the first turn and I have to come back from a 
from behind, but yeah, uh, still uh, still a better day for me. Um, I mean, uh, it's the first day, uh, it's the first race of the season where I was able to fight with the Honda boys, and uh, I feel like myself. I feel like uh, yeah, I was uh, back to to my normal uh, riding style, riding speed, and uh, yeah, it feels. Uh, Feels good because at some point I was like maybe uh, maybe I'm over maybe uh, I don't know how to ride the dirt bike anymore and uh, I was pretty sure uh, yeah it was more bike setup more than anything but yeah you know uh, after so many bad races uh, you start to question yourself and uh, yeah we we use this break after Washington uh, we had a meeting with the team and uh, yeah I really say. Uh, that I was uh, struggling with the bike and uh, I wanted to try uh, some specific part sp parts on the, of the bike and uh, we did, they, they agree and uh, yeah, obviously uh, I was right and uh, yeah, the, the bike uh, is way better, the setup is way better and uh, it fit my, my riding style, it fit m exactly what I was looking for for a long time. So um, I think I prove, uh, just proved myself that yeah, I still know how to ride the dirt bike fast and uh, yeah, now with more more confidence and more more time on that new setup. Maybe uh, for the next three round, next two round, I can uh, give a ride, uh, give a give a shot uh, for the two boys next to me. Very good. So, uh, without being too specific about your bike testing, you also did a lot of testing in the off couple of weeks there. What uh, what areas did you focus on? Uh, unfortunately, I can't really talk about it. But yeah, I mean, it's always uh, we always uh, every team we always try every. One thing and everything, like uh, it always takes a lot of time. But now, yeah, we we try pretty much uh, everything on the on on that bike. Like since the beginning of the season, I, I said that uh, that new setup, need, that new Yamaha bike, need to to get tuned. And uh, yeah, it took uh, it took us uh, nine rounds to figure it out. Okay, so Jet, a lot of changes to unit. I mean, not a lot, but there were some changes to Unadilla, the track conditions. Uh, what did you think of the track and, and uh, also the difference between last year they were in a big drought here and had very minimal water. This year they had, I think, as many as 12 or 14 inches of rain and in leading up to the race in a few weeks. So tell us what you thought of the track conditions today. Um, Layout-wise, I thought the track was pretty fast last year. I'm like, there's no way we can get the track faster. But then we decided to go straight after the uh, sky shot jump, and <laughs> they proved me wrong. We were, it was scary at first to go full gas on the four feet. Those things go fast. Chase was telling uh, the team to go get a speed speed radar gun. So, um, but yeah, to this this year I think it's more more like Unadilla should be. Um, I think they could have even ripped it deeper, but I think they were a little nervous with the rain coming. So we got pretty lucky with that, thankfully. Uh, but no, this year was a lot, lot, lot closer to being m normal Unadilla with the ruts and that stuff uh, from than last year for sure. But I felt like it was a lot of fun today, especially with, with the edges and that stuff. Kind of kept you thinking it was some sections slippery, loose dirt, then kind of having uh, more deep ruts like normal. Very good. Chase, uh, you and I were speaking before the conference. Uh, about the speed of the track. I mean, you, you can divulge a little if you wouldn't mind, and then also uh, in, in, in first touch on that basis. Yeah, I mean, that fast. Yeah, <laughs> it was fast, but I love the layout of this track. Like, the as far as minus the section after uh, Sky Shot, they could have put up one of those uh, on the side of the road. You know how I have those radars? <laughs> yeah. They probably should have put one up there because we were probably going 70 miles an hour. So. Besides for that, the track was really good. I, I, I enjoy this track. It has a really natural feel to it. And I love the ruts. So that was it was it was cool to have those today and I feel like it was ruddier than last year. So as far as the condition of the track, it was it was about perfect. But uh, <laughs> a little bit a little bit sc not scary, just uh, a little bit sketchy coming down into those ruts. I mean I think my data read like 65, 66 miles an hour or something like that going into those ruts and it's it's kind of it's kind of sketchy, but besides that, it was a good track. Nice. And so, uh, Dylan, the 450s ran first this week. Uh, you guys normally run last, and the track probably is a little rougher. What did you think? Did you notice a difference in the track not being so torn up by the time you guys got to race your motos? I, w I was scared that the track would be uh, too too flat for the first moto, but no, honestly, it was uh, it was fine. We had uh, some rough track for first moto, and uh, no, the conditions were pretty great. Uh, we had. Uh, I think the, we had a good day of racing, uh, but yeah, like they say, uh, track was <laughs> very fast and maybe too fast, I think. But uh, no, the tr that, I mean, Unagia is one of the best track on the series, and uh, 
super beautiful, super fun to ride. The, the roost is pretty, <laughs> pretty hard. Like <laughs> it hurt a lot, but yeah, that was a, that was a good day of racing. I okay, like so I got a couple of questions here. This is from D. Smitty underscore one one Jet. How does it feel to win a championship in your rookie season? Um, uh, it's a it's a pretty awesome feeling. It's definitely something that you don't know. Uh, you don't really. In, a, in my stage, you don't really dream of just because we always thought it was so far out of reach that it wasn't wasn't possible for us. So, it's uh, it's better than a dream to be honest. It's um such a cool feeling, and the I feel like I didn't know my history that good, but the most recent person I know, like I said before, was Dylan, who's done it. And uh, you have to I feel like coming into a rookie season doing that, you have to be a pretty pretty bad dude and have to be patient, smart, and I felt like I executed those those pretty well um just made uh, made smart decisions i was pretty happy of uh, kind of just learning with that learning to manage, manage races um and then deal with guys that are some like sometimes faster than me i didn't really deal with that much in in 250 the only time they were fast was probably when i was down uh d horsepower with the star guys but i mean most of the time it was pretty easy just to kind of put a few laps in gap and but with chase or dylan it's a uh, you got to do a whole lot of laps, and hopefully they have make a mistake to get a gap. So um, it's an awesome, awesome feeling. It's definitely a cool accomplishment. Uh, we're definitely just going to try and keep on clicking them off from now on, and just try and try and do my best to keep them uh, consistent and this uh, injury free. Okay, before I turn it over to the real journalists here, the uh, Chase, how about the question from Nick Porter Ten? He wrote in, "What is the most difficult part of the track? This track, or like um, yes." Today was probably the section uh, before you go up, up the hill. Yeah, yeah. It was like that long right sweeper. It was really rutted, and it uh, it was a really long turn as to have those many that many ruts. So I would say that long right hander um, and just the long ruts in general were, were difficult. But it's uh, that's why it's one of my favorite tracks. Those ruts are awesome and something I look forward to. Very good. Thank you. So. We have a question from Edwin Gomez from the FIM. What uh, would you like? To okay, congratulations, guys. You know, outstanding race. Uh, this question goes to Jet Lawrence. Uh, first of all, you wrap up the you know the clinch the 450 today. We represent Latin America fans. Everybody ask uh, where you get the just the confident right away after you finish the 250 to jump the 450. You can hear me? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. You jump the 250 right away to 450. You don't have time to practice to get your confident quick, but what you do to get in order now to winning races so quick and so easy? Because right away you you continue breaking races, win, you have 11 races, you know, uh, beating um, uh, David Bailey, he has eight. Congratulations. Um, yeah, it's uh, obviously right off a bit of a high with 250, but coming in you get, you kind of are humbled before you even really race just because of uh, you going up some pretty, going up against some pretty gnarly guys, but just coming in and knowing, I just kind of knew the work, and I wouldn't say getting confidence. Always, just kind of just knowing, I, I believe in my program, I believe in uh, in my team, uh, the bike. Uh, I feel like our bike's one of the best handling ones out there in the paddock, and this year the thing was stupidly fast. So uh, I think it's just all those things, just lining up, just believing in in your work and that stuff, and I feel like. After pilot, obviously that confidence went up a bit with going one one, and just uh, it just kind of just I don't know if it stays, but just like I think with the with the crew around me and my family, they keep me humble, so I don't get too confident. Thankfully, but uh, it definitely helps. All right, Mitch Country here from Racer X. Jet, we'll start with you. Uh, you had a crash in qualifying. You were looking back at Nick uh, Phil Nicoletti, I believe. Did he scare you and startle you, or just walk us through what happened there? No, I, I think it's quite opposite. I th feel like I scare Nick. Uh, sorry, not Nick. Uh, Phil. Phil. Um, I feel like he's very scared. And I, I gave him a little bit of roost. And, cause, and I looked back because I thought he almost crashed. I seen his front wheel wash. And then I just kind of got calm for laughing at him almost crash. I looked forward and the rut was down. I'm like, oh, gosh. So I had, ended up tipping it down. It was just, I kind of, I got good. I ran out of it, but I was, I was chuckling to myself. Oh, that's, that was a good one. <laughs> Yeah, and then your riding style, obviously you stand up a lot, like you said, being patient as a rookie and everything. Where did you learn that riding style? Is that something you just grew up racing in Europe or just, you know, kind of how, how did you get that riding style? Uh, yeah, no, I feel like it's from training at, uh, at Lomo a lot. I mean, you very rarely get time to sit down. Um, you look at some of the really, really good sand rides. You look at Jeffrey, 
uh, Jorge Prado right now. Um, even who else? Uh, Je- uh, Jeffrey. I, I don't know. <laughs> Prado needs to yeah, Prado. <laughs> I mean, and we obviously learn a bit off of Stefan Evert, uh, Harry Evert a lot, who uh, the grandpa and father of Stefan and uh, and Liam, and I think that's helped us a lot with help me and my brother with standing a lot more, and it's a lot easier to handle a bike when you're standing instead of sitting down. So um, just those days training at Lommel in the winter, standing up, not getting a break to sit down, it, it makes your back pretty tired. But now we've we've. Uh, We've got it strong enough to stand uh, stand a lot more now. <laughs> yeah, and you mentioned like this title. It wasn't even a dream because when you were so young, and you just didn't even think it was possible. Just you know, if you could tell yourself back then that it would happen, like would you even would a younger version of you even believe that this was possible to be here in the U.S., be in the top of the you know 450 class and get that title? Like, what would your younger self say? Um, I think my exact words would be like, "You're smoking." Uh, <laughs> so. It's uh, yeah, like I said, we we never really thought we would get this far. Even in even when we're in Europe, uh, the struggles we went through and there, and we actually got to meet Dylan along the way, which was nice. Uh, but the times that we had there was such a struggle that we never we just kind of were in a hole the whole time and just working every single day, uh, lasting off only a couple cent of uh, for lunch and dinner, leftovers. Uh, I mean, we got sick for just hanging our clothes inside because we got mold in, a, in an apartment that we're staying in in France in the last year. So we've gone through so much struggles. And then even once we got to America, it was like, oh, this is sick. We're going to work to there maybe one day and try and get a championship. But a 450 championship on your rookie season, how I've done it so far, no, that's I feel like I would definitely say you're smoking. <laughs> yeah. And then last one for me real quick for you and Chase. Obviously, Chase has a Supercross title. You have this, this title now. For you guys to be Geico Honda riders and then now HRC riders, like what does that mean for you to be able to deliver a title to that team that you know you started your pro career with here in the U.S.? I feel like I could speak for both of us. Um, uh, this team's an awesome team. They're like for me, they're like family. They work, they work their butts off, and I feel like our bike this year uh, with Trey helping with testing and that stuff, he's set up a, a really good bike for us for Supercross and outdoors. Um, and yeah, Chase did an awesome, awesome season in Supercross, and then uh, and then outdoors our bike was handling handling great. Uh, so like I said before, I feel like our bikes are some of the best handling in the in the paddock in 450, and I feel like our team definitely deserve a pat on the back because they worked their butt off to to get our bike to this stage. Yeah, uh, Jason here from uh, TV or Racer X. Um, since you've come here, um, are you a student of the game? Your riding style is really getting a lot of praise for obvious reasons right now. You study film, like we know you as a kind of happy-go-lucky, fun guy. But behind the scenes, are you studying, studying, studying all the time to refine your game? Um, at this point, I, I feel like in the early start of the season, so when I was younger, I was kind of looking at more. But uh, I felt like it's more kind of studying myself and critiquing small things that I've kind of got bad habits in. And, um, and just kind of critiquing, making myself better and better, and obviously training harder, and just getting myself uh, to that fitter stage. And I mean, I've still got kid, kid, sorry, I still have like kid muscles on me. I haven't really got my ad- adult size yet. I'm a, I'm a 30 size pants, uh, <laughs> so I got a slim waist. So I still got to wait till I buff up a bit, but, uh, but yeah. Um, and are you kind of guy that you're always thinking racing, or do you switch it on and off? Some guys are obsessed 24/7. Some guys are better when they step away. How do you approach it during the week? I approach it to uh, when I'm at work, I'm thinking of all the stuff and and that. But when I'm off the bike, I'm focusing on how I can make myself better with cycling and and training and doing gym stuff. And then when I'm not doing that, which that basically in our in our my whole day, it only takes up a few hours if I do it back to back. And then the rest of the day, I'm just being a normal normal 20 year old kid playing video games going golfing if i can um just normal regular stuff i mean i'm not anything doing anything crazy like uh i feel like people would think i'm just doing my job first because it only takes so many hours which i'm very lucky and grateful for i feel like a lot of jobs are, are an all day thing th- and we're lucky enough we can get out out my job done in the first half of the day on off days and then on on uh, riding days, it might la- go a little longer to pass into like three o'clock or four o'clock. Hey, my name is Jordan Post, otherwise known as Post at Random. We've all had a nice little discussion before. Um, I actually have a question for all three of you, and it's pretty simple, just I don't know how short you want to make it. But in a sport that can go in any direction, 
Like, uh, what's one thing you wish you knew from the start? Just coming out of the gate, you get what I'm saying? Like, right off the bat, what's something that you wish you knew coming right out of the gate? Um, I think one of the biggest things is uh, probably two things is either not rushing anything, and like uh, Steph and Evitz told the, our family, don't tick fast and the clock ticks. Um, and then probably just don't just ride in, in your limits. I mean, I've I've rode past my limits a couple times on my rookie season in Supercross, and it, it's bit me. Uh, so I think one of the big things is you put the work in during the week, uh, go to your limit there, but then on the race weekends, you ride it within your li limits where you're safe. Wonderful, wonderful. <clears throat> yeah, I think for me, just being patient and not trying to rush things. I, when you're young, all you want to do is you want to get to the, the pinnacle of the sport, and it seems like it goes by so fast. So um, if I was younger, I would obviously tell myself to kind of take it in and um, – not have your mind so focused on the future. You want to be able to live your life and also uh, kind of cherish the moments you have. And it's obviously easier said than done because little kids, they always they want to be uh, a 450 winner and a 450 champion, and it, it really goes by fast. So I would say just uh, cherishing the moments uh, you're experiencing in that moment. Um, <clears throat> I don't really know. Um, I think I would uh, <laughs> like uh, <laughs> no. Uh, just to be safe, like uh, many, many, I had many, many, many injury in my career, and uh, all my injury were during racing. So probably I pushed too hard. So yeah, just, just if I if I get teach to be more safe and maybe don't take the risk uh, when it doesn't uh, when it doesn't worth it. Yeah. Awesome. One more jet I got for you. Um, we had a pretty cool interview before, and I want to ask one follow up question from the last time you and I talked, and that's. At 20, like, it's cool we've watched your career so far, but, like, when was that second you were like, I'm going to take it from this level to this level? Because I'm sorry, but there's a gap between that. And I just want to know your, like, my process of, like, when you decided, like, yeah, we're going to – you've already a champion, but let's let's make sure that we're in there forever. Um, I think it was uh, whenever after Europe and that stuff and we got to here and went through that tough time and Hunter went through even more of a tougher time with injuries and that stuff, I think that was when it really switched for me and, and kind of went to that, uh, all right, I want to, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but some somehow I want to, I'm at some point in my career, I want to be at the top of it. And I just, every day I just kind of wake up and just, just make sure I, I stay to that goal. And ever since like kind of t when I first moved over here with amateurs, I was always, always hated losing as a kid and it's carried over into into the into the bigger bikes now. I mean, it's probably even worse now when you lose. Uh, you just like you get that grit that when you go back, you train even harder. So it's been a bit of a difficult this year with like obviously when you're at the top. And I mean, I've spoke to Ricky multiple times. It was when you're winning and that stuff. It's a lot harder to try and motivate you because you are winning. But thankfully, I have these two boys next to me that are making me wake up each each morning and having them chase me uh, and make sure I'm execute everything and make sure I, each weekend I come in and, and be even better than the weekend before. That was absolutely wonderful. Thank you, you three. Appreciate it very much. All right, one more question. Rob Bidos, our track side announcer. Yeah, they asked us to come in and make sure that you guys get all quizzed up on everything. All right, so you just got a big gigantic bonus. What's the best thing you're going to buy yourself as a little treat here at the end of the year? <laughs> Um, sadly, I'm on a little bit of a, normally it would be a car, but I'm on a little bit of a restriction from Daz. He said the smarter moves probably investment. I think it's stupid, but <laughs> uh, no, I probably am going to invest in, hopefully that doubles by in a couple years. But uh, most likely it would be a car, but I, got, I ended up getting some toys out, uh, earlier this year. So, I mean, um, that should uh, hang me over for now. <laughs> Very good, you guys. Congratulations. Congratulations, Jet, on the championship uh, and, the, and the perfect season. And uh, we'll see you next round in uh, Bud's Creek. Thanks. All right, you guys, congratulations. Got the 250 class here. And uh, so the first question, Hunter will ask you the very first question. Came in here awfully tight in the points. After what happened to Hayden in the first moto, uh, 
was it a little bit, I mean, obviously it's a relief that you have a little bit of cushion there. I saw an interview on, on the press, on TV, where you looked a little bit more relaxed before the second moto started there. So tell us about your day and how you know, the championship, and, and, and you must feel some relief. Oh, it was a good day. Um, the starts weren't, weren't too crash hot, um, but we're trying, trust me. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was good. Man, the roost is gnarly at this place. It was, uh, speak for everyone, it sucks. <laughs> um, be a bit sore tomorrow. But no, it was good. Happy to come away with a win. Um, boys are riding good. The track was, uh, I don't think it was traditional Unadilla. Like it was, there was ruts towards the end of the day, but it was still pretty like more so high speed normally. I mean, last year was high speed as well, but the traditional seemed to be a lot slower speed, deep, more ruts and stuff, but uh, I was good. Well, congratulations on another overall. I believe this is the sixth time you and your brother have swept the, uh, swept the, the two classes. But Jet winning the championship, I seem like you were as happy for Jet as he, he was for himself. So tell us a little bit about that. Obviously, you, you as a family are very tight, and you guys have had quite a journey to get to where that you are today. Yeah, absolutely. It was like, it's tough because you're right after his moto, I'm on the line. Like, Levi's bike just got pushed into the gate, and I'm like, oh, i got to pick a gate, and he comes over. So um, I'm like, yeah, don't, don't, don't make it too emotional. i got to go race. So, uh, but no, it was good. I'm super proud. Like, uh, gee, just as a brother racing aside and, and all that nonsense, it's, it's rad to see. You know, I think at the end of the day, I just want to see the best for him, you know, as, as you do for any of your family members or close friends. So, uh, yeah, tr really proud, really proud of him. And after Washougal, you and Jet, you guys took a few days off and took a little R&R &R there. Uh, you know, obviously some people could question if that's the prudent thing to do. And uh, it'd be hard to argue that it wasn't because you guys took a few days off and have the great results that you had today. So did it recharge your batteries? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like we all know, everyone's always got a comment to make that aren't in this position or races or even athletes themselves. So, uh, you know, everyone's a critique in their own way. If you, if you took days off, you're lazy. If you just went straight back to work, oh, you're tiring yourself out. What are you doing? So uh, we just kind of do what we, uh, you know, what we know and trust and um, it's good. Sometimes it's better to recharge the batteries and just keep the hammer down and, uh, this late in the season. And Levi, another fantastic first moto and a second overall today. Great racing today. Uh, coming off of a track that you're quite familiar with, Washougal, and then coming here to Unadilla on the opposite side of the country and turning in a great performance. So tell us about your first moto and, and, and your thoughts on the track. Uh, yeah, it was a pretty solid day for me. Um, you know, start was crucial. Uh, Obviously, you want to stay out of that roost. Like Hunter mentioned, it, it does hurt very bad. Um, so, yeah, you know, getting a whole shot at the first moto was, was definitely big for me. Uh, and I just tried to tried to hold that pace. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty stoked with how the day went. Moto 2 was, was decent. Got another good start. Um, so, yeah, second overall in the day. And I'm just going to try to keep this momentum going, really. And, Justin, Great second moto. First moto didn't go quite as planned, but you did mention that you maybe made some adjustments to your bike between motos, so tell us about that. But a good congratulations on that second moto. Yeah, uh, we tried something for the first moto and ended up going back, but I uh, just kind of didn't flow in the first moto and was kind of fighting the bike. So, yeah, we just went back to what we knew, and uh, I knew right away in the sight lap I did, you know, a couple hard sections. It, the bike felt really good, so... Uh, yeah, I was just uh, pumped to get towards the front in the beginning and uh, get out front and start hammering. It, uh, had a really good flow, so it was a fun race for me. Yeah, so you guys finished within a couple seconds at the finish line. It seemed like Joe really put a push on towards the end, kind of was trying to, Hunter had to pick up his pace, and, and you, I'm sure, were taking it a little less uh, aggressive on the final lap there, and you got into some lapped riders, so it was kind of a perfect storm for those guys to get close, and did you know how close they were getting? Uh, yeah, I, the last couple laps I did get held up with some lappers pretty bad. They weren't really respecting the blue flag. They were in their own battle, but uh, that's part of it. And uh, yeah, had a little bit of a gap. So I actually didn't know there was even two laps to go. I, uh, I didn't get any pit board for that. So I uh, seen the, the two lap card and um, kind of was surprised it came so early. Okay. Hunter, uh, before I turn it over to the real press, uh, a couple of their questions. Uh, question from a fan. Is a Instagram account. It looks like Darv Construction. He wants to know what rider inspired you the most in your career. 
I don't bother asking Jet that because he only goes back a few years, but yourself, who inspired you and uh, who did you look up to coming up? Uh, yeah, it was always Villapoto. That was, I always loved watching him. I loved how he raced um, and how he rode, um, especially when him and uh, Townley went at it in 07. That was pretty badass. Um, so it was a Villo. Yeah, it's, uh, I d there, was, there was almost a whole podcast between Townley and uh, RV there about that whole series, and they debated, and they didn't even have the facts correct, but it was a great, great yeah. going back and forth. So speaking of RV and, and a Pacific Northwest rider, Levi, uh, Ryan must have been an inspiration to you too, growing up in the Pacific Northwest. But the uh, who inspired you other than someone like Ryan Villapoto? Um, well, other than him, I mean, he's definitely one of my top picks for sure. Also, uh, guy's an animal. So, um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's a. I wouldn't have to say there's a specific one. You know, the RC and Stu era was obviously huge. That was pretty much when I started watching racing and everything. Um, and then. You know, I mean, even I'm even <laughs> trying to learn from these guys I'm racing now. You know, Chase and Jet in the 450 class. Uh, there's still a lot to learn from me. So, yeah, I'd even say them right now. <laughs> and Justin, growing up in kind of metropolitan New York City area, did you have anybody growing up that you looked to, uh, up to in your area, or just more the the main stars? Yeah, when I first started uh, following it, RC was uh, doing his thing then. So. Um, he kind of got me more involved, I would say, in, in, in my own riding. Uh, but from there, I think uh, Villapoto and Dungey, I, I really liked their race craft, and they were always so consistent. So uh, I tried to, you know, attack some things that they did. And uh, like Levi said, there's a lot of guys to, that are progressing the sport right now. And it's, uh, it's fun to keep an eye on everyone. Very good. So Mitch Kendra, Racer X here. Hey, Mitch Kundra from Racer X. Uh, all three of you guys just talk about we had that brief pause before the second moto, and then we had the restart. Like, what is going through your mind there? Like, mentally, physically, how do you stay in it? But, you know, just talk a bit about that. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> uh, I feel like the sight lap gets some of the nerves out, and you just want to go race. Like, you don't want to be <laughs> sitting there on the line thinking about too much. Uh, there's a lot to, a lot that can go through your head, and you just want to, you know, leave those emotions aside and, and get on the track. I don't, I didn't see uh, really what it was uh, delayed for, but um, yeah, it seemed like nothing changed in the eight minutes that we waited. So uh, I would have liked to get out there a little bit earlier. Yeah, same thing. I was like, man, this sucks. This is reminding me of the shootout in New York earlier this year. Where we were like, we got called off, we were ready to go, we would have had the main done before anything hit, so we are just like, all right, so I said to the guy, I'm like, are we waiting for the storm to hit and then go, or what's, uh, what's it going? He's like, I don't know anything, <laughs> just with a countdown, so uh, yeah, it didn't hit though, thankfully. Yeah, it was definitely a little nerve-wracking for me, especially when coming in with a good first moto, just trying not to let it get to me. Um, like Justin mentioned, you do your sight lap, and then from there, it's kind of like go time kind of get everything out but to do a sight lap and then sit uh it's definitely not ideal and then hunter obviously jet was or sorry joe was charging there at the end of the second mode did you know he was close did you know he was going to give it his all did you kind of expect that push from him just yeah you know, talking no, about that no i knew where he was he was like three three and a half seconds and it was actually uh the corner before the mechanics lane i made a mistake and kind of like got squirrely and then didn't get that step up and then the gap pretty much went to nothing. So that's kind of how he, how he got super close. And I'm like, all right, we've got to execute a good lap. So uh, yeah, it was good. And obviously then Justin was kind of just bringing it home. So uh, yeah, we all finished relatively close. And then Justin, for you obviously being from around here in New York, do you have like extra pride in getting a race win here or getting on the center of the podium? Like, does it kind of extra motivate you coming into this weekend, especially, or I know the goal is always to win, but you know, do you feel extra pride when you come away with a race win or moto win here? Yeah, it's a, it's a good vibe for me here. I feel like Southwick is definitely closer for me, but this place just kind of erupts more. So uh, bigger fan base here, and, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's special to me for sure. I always want to be out front leading here, and um, definitely, you know, gives me a little bit of motivation hearing all the fans around the track. I feel like they're a little bit louder for me, so it's, uh, it's cool to hear. Yeah, and then, Levi, your riding style, you're kind of stand up a lot, lean up, bite, like lean off to the side of the bike a lot. Where did you get that riding style? And for like a track like this where it's rough and ruddy, is that tough to, you know, you're always off the bike some way or the other. Is that tougher on a track like this or is it easier? Kind of just walk us through how you have to adapt that riding style on the different tracks. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, obviously, at times it's it's not good that I I can lean off the side of the bike, but um, you know I just try to I don't know stay stay as centered as I can on the bike. And even though it looks like I move around a lot, the bike itself actually doesn't move that much. So um, yeah, I'm, I don't know if it's just because I'm tall, but uh, my upper body does move quite a bit. So uh, I think it the standing part is is huge for a track like this with the ruts and um, kind of reminds me of like today was I guess a little bit like Colorado but obviously a lot faster with the ruts and everything so yeah it definitely takes some patience and um, I don't know just just trying to have some finesse out there yeah and then obviously there's a lot of fast guys in the 250 class we've seen different moto winners different overall winners we've seen guys have injuries and come back Justin you had your issue and you came back and are still in this championship you know how are you guys does that change your approach at all throughout the week or throughout the race day like knowing that the situation's changing constantly, like how do you manage that and knowing when to push too hard or, you know, not push too hard and just kind of managing it and playing it safe, I guess, in some situations? Yeah, it's funny you say that. Um, this morning I kind of got the same kind of vibe that I did at High Point. It was a little bit slick and, and muddy and <laughs> I just kept having flashbacks of going down there. So I, I didn't, <laughs> the practice wasn't well for me. No, I was just talking about like there's different race winners and kind of guys have gone out with injury, come back. There's different guys winning overalls and stuff. How do you manage, you know, there's just so much moving parts. Like like he said, with the points were closer, then Deacon has a bike issue. Uh, you yeah, have yeah. a little bit of breathing room, but Justin's still there. Just yeah. how do you manage all that? I uh, just, dude, go race. I mean, why overcomplicate something that hasn't happened yet? And we got two motos to look forward to in the day. So just, dude, go and race. Yeah, I'd kind of have to agree. I mean, I you just <laughs> try to get a good start and, and finish as good as you can every time. That's kind of, especially for me now, I mean, I'm not in any position. I just want to win. Jason for Acer X here. Just trying to make sure that my mic wire is long enough. Uh, Hunter, um, you missed a lot of time, I think, during the week of training throughout the year with the ribs and stuff. Uh, were you starting to feel your fitness was going away, and do you think you can get that back? Has that been a factor at all, and are you feeling better now? Yeah, I feel a lot better. The, the two weekends off was good, was able to do normal training. So, yeah, it's, at the start, the first four, it's easy. We've got such a good base. But, yeah, it does. It does kind of drop off a little, but um, nothing to worry about, really. I mean, I uh, uh, feel good and stuff. So, yeah, on to the next one. Uh, in the first moto, you had a – I mean, there were tons of battles going on. You made a pass on Hamaker. You had Deegan beside you, two lappers in front of you, Hamaker on the inside before Gravity Cavity. I don't know if you remember all that, but that was super clutch that you made a pass – got through two lappers and didn't get passed by the guy behind you. Do you remember that moment? And can you walk me through? That was super clutch for what's going on in this title. I mean, you just walked me through it. So nothing. Oh, there we go. Uh, do you even remember picking lines or what was running through your mind when you uh, came into that situation? No, I don't. Sorry, mate. That's a lot of roost, a lot of lappers, a lot of, a lot of passes and stuff. So it's a lot to take in. But is that what it's like in these battles then where you're just on instinct a lot of times? Yeah, I mean... If you were to stop and think, it's already too late. Yes. So, so much of it's on instinct, you know. It's just natural reflexes and, and uh, fight or flight, you know. Yeah, that says a lot right there. Um, second moto, did you feel strong uh, with Joe all over you? Did, were you happy with the way the fitness felt there? Yeah, it was good. I, when I got into second, I think it was like 15 minutes to go, and, and I seen Justin up there, and I kind of made a little bit of a push, and uh, the sun started coming down, getting a bit weird in some spots, and the track got really kind of... It kind of like turned a page and got pretty sketchy and I was like, you know, I don't know my position. Um, I did what I needed to do. So I was just kind of happy there. Just keep a good pace, stay focused. And, um, but yeah. Edwin Gomez for FIN Latin America. Congratulations, your second, uh, second place to in this season. Um, Justin, your confidence coming back and forth, but today you did pretty good. Hunter, this is a question for you. Uh, first of all, congr congratulations. The season's not over yet, right? And uh, we see lately that you have to, you have had a little issues uh, struggling in the start, passing. We know uh, there's a lot of levels in this uh, uh, class, but uh, three races to go, two, two races to go, right? And uh, what need fix to get, or what thing you're gonna fix this week in order to wrap up this uh, season or win the championship? Yeah, just get around the first turn. I'm um, confident in my own ability and where I'm at right now. So I just, yeah, get around the uh, first turn in today's case, two top tens. 
um, was good. So, yeah, obviously try to improve that. Um, it's tough with uh, 17 Yamahas on the, on the line. Doesn't make it easy. So, uh, yeah, got to bring my A game every start. Yeah, Megawatt from uh, MX Sports. First of all, congratulations to all three of you guys. Stellar rides. Uh, each of you brought something really cool and different to the table today. Hunter, uh, everything was on cruise control for about the first nine motos. We work our way into Red Bud uh, after High Point. Everything seems to be going to plan. Second moto, Red Bud. Go down in the first turn. First adversity, really, of the series. You know, first real problem. The next week at Southwick, then we have a mechanical and that type of thing. It really didn't seem to phase you uh, at this point in your career. Is that just uh, a mental issue that, you know, you were going to look past? Is something that we can't do anything about it happened? Or where does your resiliency come from? Where did you uh, find the wherewithal to put that aside and just push forward? Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, you can own, you're only in control of what you do, you know. So if there's things happening out of my control, if there's, you know, touch wood, it doesn't happen. But if there's another mechanical in the future, so be it. It is what it is. It's, uh, you know, i got a great team and we do everything we can. So, uh, yeah, I mean, dude, I can only control so much. And at the end of the day, if I give my 100% and for some weird reason it don't work out, then, hey, it don't work out. And that's a great answer, you know, and that's what I expect from somebody that's in championship contention. But so many times it seems like when the wheels come off of it, it's really hard to get back on track. And you've just done a stellar job of putting that aside and racing forward towards the championship. So congratulations on that. Uh, next question, Justin, you've got this uh, ability to really put it out of your mind and when necessarily, er, uh, necessary early in the race, you're willing to cross the line a little bit. You know when you're at max. You know when you're at nine tenths or ten tenths. And if necessary, you really find that line or that speed. And, and how do you just put that out of your mind and do what's necessary? Because uh, you have to admit, you, you know, you're willing to take a bad line. You're willing to stick it up in there. Uh, and you know what's necessary. Where does that come from? Yeah, I think uh, second moto just, uh, yeah, going up to the line, knew I had to, to make something happen. I, I didn't have a good first moto. And, um, yeah, can't give that, that many points away. So I uh, had to make a statement in the second moto and uh, really was only going to go for the win there. That was all I could really do and um, just had to make sure to execute that one. And, uh, yeah, I just felt like I was, had a lot more flow with the bike, with the track, and um, everything came together nicely for me. So um, definitely pumped on, on how it went and move forward to next weekend and just try to get two motos together finally. Awesome. Congratulations. And Levi, uh, man, oh, man, people handle pressure differently, and it, it's almost like pressure doesn't affect you. Uh, you know, you had a, a, a battle going on behind you. You were out front, and uh, that tends to maybe force mistakes and that type of thing. We don't see that out of you, and uh, just a state of mind for you, once up front, you just race forward, and you really don't seem concerned with, with the battle behind you. Yeah, I, I try not to... Um really think about it i don't really think about the race when i'm racing like i'll think about pretty random stuff so um yeah it doesn't really bother me too much unless somebody's like hitting me in a turn you know what i mean so um yeah it doesn't seem to, to bother me much at all yeah well that's a lot of maturity because even when they show you a wheel or they're revving that bike right behind you you know you race your race and that's uh, extremely commendable dude uh, you do a great job at it i appreciate that Jordan Post here. There you go. Thank you. So I have a quick question for all of you. <clears throat> right off the bat, I'm going to go off for a little different direction than where we've gone, but in each of your words, as short as you would like, what's the best piece of advice that you guys have been given each in this sport? And you can go whoever wants to start. Best advice I've been given? Yeah. I would just say believing in yourself and what you're doing and, and believing in uh, the people around you. Uh, yeah, just work hard. Just work hard. That's what you know. our dad instilled in us. Work hard and uh, stay dedicated and be honest with yourself. Yeah, uh, being honest with yourself is actually uh, a good point. Um, not making excuses, accepting what you're doing wrong, um, learning from what you're doing wrong and, and trying to better yourself in that way and yeah, just never giving up. That's wonderful, thank you. I, uh, a, pers a question that I know that I get asked for when people ask me when I meet you guys is, do you each, and we'll take Unadilla as an, an example only, is 
what part of the track is your favorite section? It doesn't have to be a line, doesn't have to be just a section. And if all three of you, please. The part where you don't get roosted? I love that. That part's really good. <laughs> I would have to say the screw you is the coolest part of this track. Nice. Yeah, uh, the sky shot for me. Um, just that whole left-hander was uh, fun, that second moto, and, and the way up to that sky shot, was uh, it's cool. Just uh, take time to breathe, look at the fans, enjoy it, and uh, then do another lap and do it again. Awesome. I got one more, and it's kind of a staple so far, but in a sport where it can go in any direction, what's one thing you wish you knew from the start? All three of you, please, once again, and that'll be the final. Yeah. How uh, gnarly this sport actually is. It looks yeah. easy on TV. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, where, where do you begin? You could write a book on what you wish you knew when you started. Yes. I mean, it's a pretty loaded question. <laughs> I'd buy it. <laughs> Man, I don't even... I, I don't know. Like, Yeah, I, I, there's not even one answer for that. I mean, there's That's a good. Lot. Good. I yeah, like that. There's, there's several things, I think, that... Yeah, I, I don't even have an answer for that one. Good. That's awesome. I mean, you could say the one thing you'd want to know is like how to know the other million things yeah. before you start. Yeah. <laughs> I think, like, right coming out of there, you know, right, well, everything... Yeah, I think you guys There's are. still a lot of things I'd like to know. Like there you go. Yeah, I don't know. Cool. That was it. All right, I think that's it. Well, thank you very much for spending your time with us, and uh, we'll see you next week at Bud's Creek. Thank you.